Hello, welcome back to ECS Coffee. My name is Rebecca and today we're going to do a little bit of a different video than you're used to from us. Uh, no reviews, no real tutorials over specific machines. We're just going to go through some of the basics about espresso machines. We know that when you dive into the world of espresso and espresso machines, there's a lot of terms that you come across and a lot of that can be really overwhelming. So we're gonna break it down for you, what each of them mean, the main ones that you're going to find. Um, so hopefully that'll clear some stuff up for you. So when you're looking for espresso machines, I'm sure you've come across a couple of these terms, including super automatic, semi-automatic, and manual. Um, super automatic machines are going to grind, tamp, and brew your espresso all at the press of a button. This is a super automatic machine. You're not going to be, need to do any of the work. There's no guessing. It does it itself. This is a semi-automatic espresso machine. Machines that have a portafilter and some programmability, including shot volume um, or the pre it's pressurized internally, those are semi-automatic espresso machines. A manual espresso machine is one that's going to have like a lever um, or two levers. Some brands that come to mind would be Rock, ROK. They're not machines that we stock currently. One of the main ways that you can tell you're looking at a semi-automatic espresso machine is if it has a portafilter. This is what your portafilter looks like. This is where you're going to tamp and brew through your espresso on a semi-automatic machine. Your portafilter is going to be able to house either a single shot, a double shot, or sometimes even a triple shot basket. A single shot um, espresso basket is going to require less uh, ground espresso in it and it's going to produce a smaller espresso shot. You'll need to make sure that you're pressing the correct button on your espresso machine when pouring a single espresso shot with a single basket. With your double shot basket, you're going to want to make sure to do the same thing. This is what most people will end up using. It's what you'll get when you go to a cafe. Um, so if you have this basket in, you'll be doing a double shot, it'll be deeper, and it'll sometimes even have a double cup symbol on the back. With espresso um, machines that have a portafilter, you're often given two different types of baskets with your machine, a single wall basket and a dual wall basket or pressurized basket. The single wall basket is the one you will probably use the most if you're using freshly ground coffee, either from an external grinder or from a grinder that's built into the espresso machine. It's going to allow you to um, dial in your espresso a little bit better, which means get a more precise grind size and get a perfect espresso shot. A dual wall or pressurized basket is kind of like training wheels. You'll want to use that when you're new to espresso or it's a brand new espresso machine, you've changed your bean, you can't get your grind size right, anything like that. A dual wall basket is going to help to increase the pressure in the espresso shot if maybe your grind size is a little too coarse or maybe you just can't seem to get the right espresso shot and it's not giving you that beautiful crema that you want. You'll want to use your pressurized basket at that point. You can tell it's a pressurized basket because it will have less holes for the uh, water to flow through or the coffee to, to flow through. This is an unpressurized basket or a single wall basket and this is a pressurized basket. You can see that this has a lot more holes for the coffee to flow through than our pressurized basket. So when you've started looking at a semi-automatic espresso machine, you've probably heard the terms that I might have used already in this video, like dialing in um, or tamping or anything like that. Dialing in your espresso shot essentially means that you're getting the right grind size. Why that is important is because if your grind size is too coarse, you're going to allow too much water to flow through the espresso and it's going to be really watery. That's going to be called an under extracted espresso shot. It's going to taste sour and it's often going to be very weak. If your grind size is too fine, you're not going to allow enough water to flow through. You're going to have an over extracted espresso. It's going to taste bitter and sometimes you won't even see it come out of the portafilter. You need to allow a little bit more room for that water to flow through to get a perfect shot. So if you're using your espresso machine for the first time and you're having trouble um, getting the right shot, it could be because your grind size is too coarse and you're getting a too watery espresso, or your grind size is too fine, you need to allow more water for the um, espresso to flow through. Think of it like sand and stones. 
Next is tamping. When you're looking at a semi-automatic espresso machine, you will come across the term tamping. What that is essentially is applying the correct amount of pressure to the ground espresso that is in your portafilter. The correct amount of pressure is about 30 pounds. So it's a really good push. You don't wanna pack it in there because that's also going to restrict the water flow through your espresso. So you wanna apply a good amount of pressure, make sure that it's level, and then you'll be able to pour your espresso. Most machines and most portafilters will give you guides in the baskets or on their tampers to where you should be tamping to or um, how level you are. A lot of the times a portafilter will sit level, just like this one from our Ascaso, to make your um, tamping a little bit easier. The Breville portafilters will also lay level, making the tamping a lot easier. If you apply the correct amount of pressure and you have the right grind size, you will be getting a really good espresso shot. So while looking for your espresso machine, you've probably also come across the terms dual boiler, heat exchange boiler, thermoblock heating system, single boiler dual use. Um, all of those mean different things. It can be kind of confusing. A thermoblock heating system is a small metal heater that has water lines that run through it. It's going to heat only the water that's needed. So it's a very quick, fast, and efficient way of heating. Um, you'll often find that in super automatic machines and semi-automatic espresso machines. Sometimes a super automatic will have a dual thermoblock heating system, which will allow the machine to brew and steam at the same time. So brewing espresso and steaming milk at the same time. Um, you'll often pay more for that because it is a more expensive way of heating to have two different heating systems for each method of brewing, espresso and just your milk. A single thermoblock heating system will require you to pour your espresso and then steam your milk afterwards. You won't be able to do the two functions at the same time. Um, some people prefer to steam their milk and then pour their espresso. I personally prefer to pour my espresso and then steam my milk. The wait time with a thermoblock heating system to go from your espresso to your milk, because your milk does require a higher temperature for pouring or for brewing or steaming than your espresso does. Is the wait time is about 30 seconds, 30 seconds to a minute, depending on the, the size of the unit. The wait time for heating is usually about 30 seconds. Sometimes in certain espresso machines, you have upgraded thermoblock heating systems that decrease the wait time between espresso to milk, as well as decrease the um, heat up time. Often it'll decrease it to about three seconds, so almost an, an immediate heat up time. A single boiler dual use is very similar to a thermoblock heating system in that you can't brew and steam at the same time. You will still need to wait for your milk to heat up after your coffee, and you will need to wait for the unit to cool down to go from milk to coffee. A single boiler dual use is often found in, is only found in semi-automatic espresso machines. You won't be finding that in a super automatic machine. Not now anyways. Some machines that have a single boiler dual use will be Gaggia, Rancilio. They are fantastic machines that produce fantastic espresso, but they do require a bit of a heat up time. It's usually about a one and a half to 15 minute heat up time, depending on the size of the unit. Often machines with single boilers um, require what's called a purge after steaming the milk. This is because the inside of the machine is just too hot to brew your espresso and you need to cool that down. So you would often do that just by letting a little bit of water out of your group head or a little bit of water out of your steam wand. The machine will specify which one it requires. A heat exchange boiler and a dual boiler are kind of the same thing. A heat exchange boiler allows you to brew and steam at the same time. What you have is a main boiler that is heated up for your milk temperature, so the higher temperature. And then you have a little thing that runs through it. I'm not a technician, I don't know the technical terms. You have a thing that runs through it that's at a lower temperature for your coffee. That's your heat exchanger. And this allows you to brew your espresso and steam your milk at the same time. It's often less money than a dual boiler um, and it's often found in semi-automatic espresso machines. Rocket has a couple espresso machines that have heat exchange boilers, as does Lalit.
um, two really great companies. A dual boiler is just as it sounds. You have two separate boilers. You have a boiler for your milk and you have a boiler for your coffee and they heat up separately so that you can do it at the same time. You can brew and steam at the same time. It is a very, very stable way to heat um, your espresso machine, so they'll often last a very long time. All right, so steaming milk on your espresso machine. If you have a super automatic with an automatic milk frothing system, you don't have to do anything. It's going to froth the milk for you at the press of a button. If you have a super automatic with a Panarello wand, you will need to do a little bit of that work. The Panarello wands are great though because they incorporate the air into our milk and heat it. So it produces foam and heats the milk without us really needing to do any of the work. They're often not wands that you would use to make latte art. So if you are wanting to make latte art, you will need to look at a machine with a more traditional style wand, like the Breville Barista Express or one of the Escasos. A traditional style wand will require you to manipulate the milk and incorporate that air to create the foam manually. You'll often see these wands in cafes and you would be able to produce a nice latte art with those. These ones will be able to do a better micro foam, but you have to put in the work to know how to use them. So if you've been on the hunt for an espresso machine, you've probably also come across some information on espresso beans. One of the main things we tell our customers is not to use oily beans in their espresso machines. The oil will act as a binding agent and it will gum up in the grinder and cause clogs. You'll want to stick with something that's an espresso roast or a medium roast or something that you know is not oily. You've probably also come across Arabica and Robusta. Well, they are different beans. Robusta is often used in espresso because it gives it an extra body and gives it a really, really nice crema. You'll see it noted on this bag here. So you'll often find Robusta in Italian espressos like Lavazza or Trusillo. This is a 100% Arabica blend. Usually Arabica is what we drink every day. It's found in most of our coffees and Robusta is found in mostly just espresso. So you're probably drinking Arabica at home. Sticking with an espresso roasted bean means that you're going to be pulling a good espresso shot. Usually if a bean is roasted for espresso, it's meant to be poured as espresso because that's how the roaster thinks it's going to be, um, it's going to taste the best. That doesn't mean you can't put a medium roast coffee bean down your grinder. If you like the flavor, it's all up to you. Thanks for watching guys. I hope that this clarified some of the terms you might come across in some of our videos or doing your own research at home. If you have any more questions about any units um, or anything else, just leave them down below. If you liked our video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and give us a follow if you wanna stay up to date with us. Thanks.